Give them enough power to, to, to tell yourself? Yeah, that's the idea. I'm okay. just starting a 7,000 kilometer trip. Uh, it's a hybrid pedal and solar power. Excellent. A couple years ago, we had the fortune of interviewing Mark Halvoran back at the Maker Fair in San Francisco. Um, he was a customer of ours building a phenomenally elaborate solar e-bike with sort of a long-term mission of doing something of around the world solar bike trip. Uh, Mark's been documenting in great detail the build sequence, the evolution of his pursuit, uh, one that he's been working on for well over a decade, if I believe correctly. Um, and, uh, and with an enormous amount of DIY ingenuity throughout this, um, right to the point of actually having all of his solar panels custom made as light as possible. Um, so unfortunately COVID of course got in the way of many people's round the world traveling plans, um, but with that coming to something of an end in sight, uh, Mark's doing a shakedown test and uh, to our good fortune, uh, leaving from Furry Creek in BC uh, with Vancouver being his first stop. And uh, it's our first chance to invite Mark into our helm um, and also just do a follow-up to catch on what has changed on his bike since we last talked and uh, what's in store for this. And since we've taken such a strong interest in solar just in the last year with our sailboat projects and with a lot of the customer interest, I'm sure there's a much broader audience out there uh, interested to see what Mark has done here. This is the cockpit and everything I need is just right in front of me. Uh, I've got some uh, Harley style motorcycle switches here for uh, lights and a, a horn and turn signals. Uh, here's a Grin uh, potentiometer that I've got wired for controlling the tilt on the panel. In the front of this one I have remote switches for the cycle analyst because I can't reach the buttons on the front so I've got a couple in the back here so I can switch that and I have the solar uh, firmware on there so I can keep track of my production. It's a little overcast now, we're getting 31 watts. And uh, on the right I've got my phone on a wireless charger. So that was a that was a new addition that I'm really happy about. So I don't have the cord when it gets wet and I can still keep charging it. And uh, the DJI controller here with the drone that I can just hand launch and stop without having to get off the bike to get some good footage. Normally when I'm riding, I just have it set to, to tilt as far as it needs to, to track the sun. So there's a couple of sensors on the, on the back of the panel and uh, they, just, they just detect whether there's more sun on the left side or the right side of the panel and the motor moves it until, until those two are equal. And usually when it's overcast, it'll be close to flat, but because we're standing here next to this tree, Tilting away from the tree a little bit turns out uh, gives gives a little bit more power because it, it opens it to the to the bright part of the sky, and I've got a few different modes on here just from trial and error that I found that I need uh, when riding. So for example, when riding through like a narrow opening like to a bike path, I just flip the switch, and it automatically tilts to the uh, to the nearest side so that it's it's nice and narrow and I can get through which is nice if it's like a crowded bike path or something like that and uh, when I get through I just put it back to automatic and it finds the Sun again and it's tracking and um, the the other thing I sometimes need to do if it starts getting windy is I leave it in tracking mode but I can limit how far it tilts so if it's very windy I just turn this uh, potentiometer here all the way and it just levels out. The bike is tilted a little bit so it doesn't look quite straight but if it was if I was riding then this would be completely completely level and uh, if it's if it's just a little bit windy and it's early in the day I don't want to go in completely vertical I just adjust this a little bit and it'll only go to 10 degrees or 20 degrees or whatever is uh, you know whatever feels safe for the conditions. I just play it by ear like by how much the bike is moving right. and um, yeah, so through trial and error, I found that I, I needed a few different ways of controlling it right from the handlebars without taking my eyes off the road. So that's the nice thing. I just move my hand down. This, this part moves. So obviously the, the, the suspension and the wheel needs to be attached to the static part. There's a little bit of an overlap here. And these are just off the shelf carbon fiber tubing from a supplier who, who, who specifically makes them so they nest inside each other. So it's, yeah, so it's a 38 millimeter diameter motor about this long. It ended up being too weak, even it's, it's adjustable, but at the strongest settings I found that wind would like still push it over. 
So I ended up coming up with a clever solution where I ended up putting a second gearbox on the other side of the clutch uh -huh. and replaced the motor with one that's, I think, 9 RPM. So what is the weight of just panels with the laminate without any support structure? Just the laminated solar panel without solar structure, I think it's 300 grams each for, for 4 by 6 The support structure is, is like a, is a Nomex honeycomb with top and bottom layers of, of carbon fiber Kevlar cloth. Yeah. So um, how uh, it's a quarter inch, and yeah, I had I was using what one inch foam on the last version, and I and it was way stiffer than it ever needed to be. Every time it gets touched, it creates a divot. Oh, that's that's me being a, a dummy. I went through one of those traps to get on a bike trail. When I was maneuvering it, and it was just a tall fence, and I accidentally managed to sort of press it into part of the fence. I didn't even realize it happened until like two hours later. I looked, but there doesn't seem to be any any. Permanent damage. There's no appreciable decrease in output, and uh, like and it didn't and it didn't and it didn't puncture the the, the top layer, which was yeah. So 3D printed enclosures. This as well. This and this is an evolution. Of, it's a bit of a. I, I don't think I should even open it. But the idea is to have all the switches and DC converters and even a motorcycle alarm system in there, and you know, and and like the 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 headlights, the German uh, Bauschenmuller. They need like. Uh, they're made for nickel metal hydride battery, okay. so it's, it's like, I think, 6.5 to 7.2 volts or something, so there's a converter for that. I was going to show you where the batteries are, so let me turn the ear off. Uh, four light goes here, and two on the other side. Uh, phase runner and backup, this is actually the backup phase runner. I have both of them mounted with, all I need to do is switch the cables over, and I've got the, I've got the, you know, the, uh, the I copy the profile over, and I have three um, uh, charge controllers, separate for the roof because it doesn't tend to keep the same angle. Yeah. And um, I think I couldn't fit all three, like voltage or right. and current so wise. Two of them are either in series or parallel. Right. Or one's by itself. So yeah. back two are in parallel, and the one that gets shaded in the front is on its own controller. So okay. so that mitigates uh, mid of partial shading concerns. Exactly. So I put resistive heating pads between the batteries, and my thinking was that I'm going to encounter uh, parts of the trip where it's going to get below uh, zero degrees centigrade, below freezing overnight. And in the morning, I want to be able to take full advantage of the rising sun, even though the batteries are cold. Uh, so uh, I found uh, resistive heating pads that when six are wired in series, they'll, they'll just provide a gentle heat off the battery voltage of the LIGOs and uh, connect it to a temperature controller. And at about, I, right now I think I have it set for 10 degrees centigrade, they turn off. And once I start riding, there's resistive heat within, within the battery, so, so it shouldn't be necessary. When there's heavy traffic around, I spend years looking at like the brightest LEDs on the road and which vehicles had them. And certain vehicle manufacturers, Tesla and Audi, have nice bright taillights, uh, but like you can't get those as aftermarket. And what I finally figured out is that what I really want is the stuff that's made for emergency response vehicles. So like for volunteer firefighters or for a police car or, or an ambulance or something like that, that they can embed inside the headlights. So I, I haven't worked out where I'm sleeping tonight. <laughs> Thank you. It'll be, it'll be ugly if it fell over. So Mark has one of our early release version one all axle motors on here and he's put on an impressive 30,000 kilometers in the three years since his bike was first built up. Um, super impressed at how well it's held up. Uh, you can see some sort of pitting and corrosion from the original uh, rotor rings. Uh, but our main concern here is that the version one all axle motor had a really thin section ball bearing and we had a few cases where those bearings became a weak point and, uh, and ended up getting a bit loose on people. Um, so at this point we've got a substantially upgraded version two all axle motor with a much thicker, better sealed ball bearing. Um, and some other mechanical improvements. So before Mark sets out on his epic journey ahead, I really want to take this chance to just upgrade his motor hardware accordingly and give us a chance to sort of do some uh, analysis of the innards of this motor to, to see if there's anything we can learn on that front. So let's go get a wheel built up for you, Mark.
hurts to add Staterade inside these hubs, uh, especially since there's some mountain passes in Mark's upcoming voyage. Thousand miles. How do you feel about that? Swell. 